Sis use. Hope you're doing well. I'm just gonna start that again. Sis use. Hello. Uh, hope you're doing well. My name's James. Uh, I'm one of the leaders at City Church, and it's great to be with you for another City Youth Weekly. And unless you have been living under a rock, hello. You will know that on Sunday afternoon, uh, a statue uh, of Edward Colston was torn down and cast into the harbour. Uh, and if that wasn't enough, now the pin on Google Maps that normally would uh, be at the fountains if you wanted to find a statue is now in the harbour as well, So, which I think is brilliant. Uh, and if you had good history teachers, and I used to be a history teacher, if you had good history teachers, uh, then hopefully you would have been taught about who Edward Colston was because he was a merchant in the 18th century uh, responsible uh, for a lot of the shipping of uh, men, women and children from Africa into the slave trade uh, in America. So he's a hugely controversial uh, figure and there's been all sorts of debate over the years about whether there should be a statue commemorating him um, and uh, obviously people took uh, action in their own hands, took matters into their own hands, and tore the statue down, and it raises all sorts of questions about other things that are named after Colston, like Colston Hall, Colston Girls' School. There are streets and there are names, and there are other things that have connections with the slave trade, and so there's going to be a whole load of conversation around that, uh, which is a good thing because I think uh, this issue around racism, uh, particularly that has come up, and Black Lives Matter, is an incredibly important conversation to be having. It, what this incident on Sunday afternoon did make me think of, however, was uh, a story concerning a statue in the Old Testament. Uh, and uh, it's in the book of Daniel, so you may well know the story uh, well, but a king, uh, the king of Babylon, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, builds a 90-foot statue of himself uh, and asks the whole country to bow down and worship him as if he is some kind of god. Uh, pretty arrogant statement. Uh, there were three Israelites who were in the nation at the time, uh, amongst others who had been exiled to Babylon, but there are three that are named in this story who refuse to bow down. And so Nebuchadnezzar gathers the whole nation together to bow down to the statue, and these three men don't. They've got great names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, and, and these men were eventually brought in front of the king because they didn't bow down. Uh, and after conversation, they are uh, convicted of, of this crime and are cast into the fiery furnace. Uh, and then something incredibly strange happens in which they're there in the fire and yet yeah, they're not being burned. And in fact, what happens then is a fourth person joins them in the fire. It's an extraordinary situation. It says in verse 22 of chapter 3, it says, The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. So even the soldiers around them were, were, died because it was so hot. And yet these men uh, didn't die. And then someone fight, sees this fourth man walking around the fire. And Nebuchadnezzar the king approaches the blazing furnace and says, Come out, come out, servants of the Most High God, come here. And he recognises something of what is going on and eventually begins to praise the Lord God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And it made me think, uh, you know, on Sunday, people standing up for what is right in the protests, uh, people standing up for Black Lives Matter, speaking out, making a stand. Uh, and it got me thinking, you know, what are the things, what are the pressures that we face in our lives where we just kind of go with what everyone else uh, does. So that, that could be all sorts of things. Could be uh, around uh, drinking, could be around uh, relationships, could be around uh, being addicted to gaming or your phones because everyone's doing it, trying to portray ourselves well on social media, pretending that, that we live this particularly glamorous life when actually behind closed doors we're really struggling. 
there's all these things that we do, isn't there, where we bow down to the culture around us, and yet we see a model of these three men who, who refuse to do that, and in fact then God comes and rescues them. And this, this fourth man that appears is likely to have been Jesus, before, like pre-incarnate, before he came in flesh. He came in this moment, and, and I think there's something about obedience, isn't there? about following God when it's hard, when people around us might criticise us for what we believe, what we stand for, that it's important to do that. Uh, And so I want to encourage you just to think, you know, what are the pressures that you're facing at the moment? And where do you feel uh, the tug on your heart, knowing deep inside I really should make a stand, but, but scared about the outcomes of that, perhaps you're scared about losing friends, losing popularity, you might get slated uh, on, on Instagram or on social media in some way. I just want to encourage you that God sees and God knows and he's there to bring you strength and encouragement. And so when there's something that does come when you know you need to make a stand, you can ask God for help. Uh, and so I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for us together that we would make a stand, that we wouldn't go with just the tide uh, of the culture, but that we would make a stand uh, for God. It says in Romans 12, do not be conformed by the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And that comes by knowing God. That when we know God, when we give ourselves to him, when we hear his voice, we don't conform to the culture around us, but we are transformed by the renewing of the mind, by, by reading his word, by praying, by spending time in his presence. And so I just want to encourage you to do that uh, today and later on this week as well. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this remarkable story in which you came and you saved and you rescued. And Lord, I thank you that's a picture uh, in part of what you, Jesus Christ, did for us. You came to save us from our sin. Uh, so that we might be rescued, that we might experience forgiveness and freedom. Uh, And so that we just pray right now, Lord, that if we're feeling under pressure, if we're feeling like we're supposed to do the right thing, uh, according to what our friends say, going with the tide, Lord, help us to make a stand for what is right and true, what is honouring to you. Help us uh, to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys uh, and see you soon.